I love fiddle tunes, and I was already planning on teaching this great fiddle tune, Lost Indian, uh, when I got the sad news that one of my flat-picking heroes, uh, Mr. Doc Watson, passed away and went to be with the Lord, and we're going to miss him so much. The very first flat-picking that I ever heard uh, was Doc playing Black Mountain Rag, and I remember trying to learn it and just butchering it like crazy. Um, but man, what, what a genius, what an influence. I dug up his version uh, that he played on a record with Tony Rice and Norman Blake. If you don't have it, go buy it, okay? It's, the, the record is incredible. And you should buy people's music anyway to support them, okay? So uh, go buy it. I think it's called Norman Blake and Tony Rice number two. What I've done, Doc has two solos in there. I've grabbed both of those and kind of uh, done a, a, a meshing of, of both of those solos to really get a, a doc style solo to, to Lost Indian. Check it out, see what you think. about 30 minute video lesson over there on this particular song. We're gonna um, teach you from measure one to the very last, that ending, that cool chromatic ending. I'm gonna teach you all that and then I've got another video segment that um, shows where I play it slowly at two different slow speeds from start to finish. And then I've got a rhythm tracks video where I play four different speeds of rhythm tracks so that you can practice along. Okay, so you have the tab, I'm gonna teach you how to play it and we'll play it slowly for you and then you get a, a chance to practice along with some rhythm tracks. So uh, let's have fun. Let's jump into this first measure of Lost Indian, Doc Watson style. This song is in the key of D, but we're actually gonna play it in the position of C. So how do we get the key of D if we're playing out of the position of C? Well, that's easy. We slap a capo on the second fret that makes our C chord now become a D chord. So let's look there and measure one. What are we doing exactly? We're going to use three quarter notes to just walk right up this C scale, starting on this third fret down here with our ring finger. And we're going to walk right up that C scale to where our melody starts in measure two. Now, I want you to pay close attention. If you've watched my videos before, this is old hat to you. But if it's a down stroke, we want a down, or a down beat, we want a down stroke. If it's an upbeat, we want an upstroke. You see that measure two there? We have one and two and three and four and down up, down up, down up, down up, okay? Um, it's very important to pay attention to those uh, pick direction markings because later on when we get into uh, the more complicated hammer-ons and slides and things uh, like that that get more syncopated, this uh, proper pick stroke direction is really going to help us out, okay? Um, so there in measure two, we're going to be based out of this C chord, okay, this song, um, it's, it's very much based out of the C chord, so much that, that a lot of times I'll leave, as you'll notice, I'll leave my index finger down on this B string. It doesn't happen all the time, but many times, even when I'm playing stuff down here, the way that Doc played it um, allows you to keep this C note, um, this first fret up here on the B string, pressed down. We'll see that um, as we move along. Uh, but once again, measure two, very slowly, um, sounds like this. One and two and three and four and... Okay, now Doc, I want to touch real quick on his right hand. He would lightly kind of grace his, his pinky on the top of the guitar. It wouldn't be a hard plant like a banjo player, but he would have uh, his fingers kind of just gracing on the top there. Um, sometimes I do that. Sometimes uh, I think when I played this song at the top of the video, I, I didn't anchor at all. I'm just letting my palm kind of rest on the end pins there. What's important is that we don't have any tension, okay? We don't want to be tight down here. So if you do anchor, um, that's fine, but let's just not let it hold us back, okay? Um, moving into measure three, 
we've just got more of these eighth notes. So measure sl uh, three, slow down, sounds like this. So, so far in measure two and three, we've really used our ring finger on our left hand a whole lot, haven't we? We haven't used um, our pinky or our index finger. And that's typical of kind of playing out of this C position. We're going, to, we're going to work those two fingers out quite a bit. Okay. Now, um, as we look at measure four, we see uh, where we come to rest on this third fret down here. And I, I want to point out something else about Doc's playing uh, that we're going to see um, uh, pertaining to measure four, is that he does a lot of um, kind of these little grace note cross picking stuff. And whenever you listen to it up to speed, you don't really pick it out. But after, as you slow it down, um, you really start to hear it. And uh, if, if you don't play it, you'll notice that something's missing. Um, but we see it there in measure four. It's those upstrokes. Uh, listen to this. Okay. Well, now, when, when you're listening to Doc, really, uh, the main notes that you hear are on the uh, downbeats. Very lightly, he'll do these little upstrokes on that open G string and on this first fret of the B string. So it sounds like this. Hear that? He does not play all of these notes the same volume. That's not what Doc does. He's, he's accenting his melody. He's, he's the master of dynamics. Take you a little practice to be able to jump those strings. That's um, why it's so important to get this uh, alternate picking down um, to have our downstrokes and upstrokes in the correct spot. Good. Now, as we move into uh, measure five, let's take a look at that. We're going to go into an A minor shape. It says B minor on the tab because that's actually what chord it is, but since we have the capo on, we're playing it in an A minor shape. Still, we're going to leave this index finger down. Okay, we can, we can keep it down for this whole line um, of tab, as you'll see. But we've got our hammer on from the open G string to the second fret. And then once again, he's pulling volume down um, after this hammer on. So measure five sound like this. He really likes to, to accentuate those hammer ons. Um, okay, so these little um, notes there on the uh, second beat, they're almost, I mean, they're there as kind of as uh, timekeepers, you know, and if you don't play them, like I said, you will notice it, but uh, it just sounds really great to play those lightly after the hammer on. And then accent again, that second hammer on. Um, that second hammer on is gonna carry on over into measure six, uh, on, on, into the first beat, and then we'll start back up on the end of one and measure six. So let me play measure five and six for you uh, slowly together. Ready, go. So where are our melody notes? You can tell when you listen to Doc's version. Okay. So it's important to, to stress those melody notes and maybe not stress the other notes so much. Great, good job. Now remember that um, if you're watching this on the website, I have another video segment where we play this whole version from start to finish without any pauses very slowly um, so that you can practice along with that as well as the uh, back of rhythm tracks that I have posted. Uh, measure seven, we're gonna come right, pretty much just right down the scale. Okay, it sounds like this. Very important to get our up and down strokes correct. Measure eight. Good. So if you'll notice, I'm going to play that whole second line there, and I'm going to have my index finger down here on the first fret, and you'll notice that it doesn't need to come up for that entire line. See that? Pretty, pretty handy. Not only does it um, help you because we're going to need it in a little while, so you've already got it down, but it also helps with some overtones. Doc was such a, just a smooth player. His, his guitar um, just always sounded so complete, and I think that's one reason is because he kept this, these notes like this pressed down uh, so that the, 
the overtones of the guitar uh, always pertain to the chord that he was playing. Um, measure nine, we're just going to end this first little phrase. Two uh, strums there on the second and third beat. And then we're going to go right back into repeat of, uh, of these first eight bars. And it's pretty much the same. Pretty much the same. Um, I did vary it up a little bit, uh, just as he did um, on his recording. I'm just going to play through it slowly for you, going into measure 10. This is all really similar. There in measure 12, um, he does it a little differently than he did in measure 4. Um, the grace note, uh, the, or the uh, ghost note is going to be that first fret up there again, but the rest of the notes I want to hear a little bit more volume. Hear that? Good. Uh, moving into the next B minor section, measure 13, it's fairly similar. We're going to keep it uh, this time instead of rolling through the, the first three strings, we're going to uh, just stay on these two strings here, the second and third. right back down the scale like we did in measure seven. Into measure 17. And instead of strums here on measure 17, we're going to do something that Doc liked to do. These kind of, I just call them tickles. We're going to do a down, up, down, up, very lightly. He was almost just keeping time. He wasn't really meaning for those notes to, to sound out very much. Now we're going to go into the second part, the B part, where our melody changes a little bit. Let's take a look at that. Mm -hmm. 